coming up next on Access Framingham TV, Clem 2, British Columbia, with my guests, Mater and George Eisenberg. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jack Barron, host of Travels with Jack on Access Framingham TV, where guests share with our audience a recent trip, a vacation, a cruise, or maybe a day trip right here in New England. You'll see their photos and hear about the exciting places they have visited. On this month's show, I'm very pleased to welcome Maida and George Eisenberg. In September of 2016, George and Maida went to Clem 2, British Columbia, Canada to see the spirit bear, which is a white bear caused by a recessive gene. They wanted to see bears, bears both black and brown too, and they also learned about the Indian struggle to preserve their culture and how they respond to a whale in stress. What parts of the world have you visited? Please be my guest on Travels with Jack and share your travel experience with our viewing audience. Just contact us here at Framingham Television and let us know you'd like to be a guest. You can phone AFTV at 508-875-5434 or you can send an email message to info at accessfram.tv. Our associate producer will contact you to make arrangements for you to be on our show here on Access Framingham TV. If you don't live in Massachusetts, we would be pleased to assist with your travel to the Access Framingham studio. And now, let me welcome Mater and George to Travels with Jack. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Let me give the folks a little background. Uh, George and Maida both live in Lexington, where they have resided for more than 30 years. They raised their two children, Eric and Leah, in Lexington. Uh, they are both currently retired from the world of employment, but they're very busy anyway. George was in the insurance industry and Maida worked with IBM in high technology. Uh, George is an avid photographer, and he, I'm assuming, is responsible for most of the pictures you're going to see today. And Mater is a devoted gardener and knitter. She didn't wear any of her knitting things today, and we didn't get any plants from her, but <laughs> we're going to trust time. her that she's devoted. Uh, they both also love to travel and had mentioned to me uh, that they have been to every continent in the world except Antarctica. So I told them they better get going to Antarctica. It makes it easier to just say we've been to every continent. And also before it melts away. Yeah, but Well, we'll discuss that later. Uh, they have been married for more than 48 years to each other. They told me to add that in. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're going to share with me a little bit about their trip to British Columbia. Tell me how it started. What made you decide that's where were you going to go? And when Bill shows us pictures, we'll talk about what's on the screen. But up until then, give me a little bit idea what made you pick the British Columbia to go to. I should go. Okay. <laughs> that was your idea. My idea. Uh, I was fascinated by the concept of a white bear. This is not a polar bear. Uh, this is a white bear that uh, exists in this very small part of the world. And uh, this How did you find out about it? How did you... Oh, I, I Somebody just, had an insurance claim, my white bear turned yeah, black? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no. You know, uh, you know, someone got killed by a white... No. Uh, they... Uh, uh, 
I don't know. You just read about okay. things and you find out about things and you, as you ex begin to explore where is it that you want to go, uh, lo and behold. Uh, I want to uh, see, see this white bear. I want to see this white bear. It's okay. so unusual. There are only uh, about 200 of them uh, in really? the world in oh. this area. And uh, there are a number of different companies that have these trips. But it, uh, uh, I thought that this particular one that we took, uh, which is not really with a, any tour group, but rather going to a particular lodge, uh, where the guides will take you out to various so sites. So this is a uh, established tourist type of thing where they have an industry in place. People come here and they want to see this white bear. So it draws people. That's correct. Okay. There's a uh, 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 there's a lodge that we stated that is run by uh, the local. Now, you and I would call it Indian tribe. They call them Indian bands. Okay. And by this uh, local Indian band, they own uh, the, the uh, lodge. They own the entire area. And they're the ones who are beginning to develop this tourist industry uh, and uh, as a way of protecting their way of life. I got gotcha. you. As well as protecting the wildlife that's in this so area. So where did you fly into? You flew from Boston, I'm assuming? Yeah, we flew from Boston to Vancouver. Okay. And we'll see a few sh a few photos of Vancouver and Victoria Island, which oh, yes. are right did in that Did you spend area. a little time there? Yeah, yeah a little Did you bit. like it? I hear one, I've never it's, been it's there, a, but I hear it's beautiful. It's yeah. a great city. It is. City. Yeah. It's Some a people great would city. make that their def destination never mind go further and then from uh, and, and I think that we have a nap map if we could uh, we will show the map there, oh, look at that hey. thank you Bill yeah <laughs> uh, there's a map of where British Columbia is and now we're going to see where Clem is Clem is 90 minutes north uh, well it's 90 minutes north from the uh, Vancouver you know I have to interrupt you I misread my email Bill said to me, we're going to talk about Klemt. I thought he meant for Klemt. So I said, <laughs> I said, these guests are going to be for Klemt today. No, we were for okay, Klemt too. Klemt too. All right. Klemt too. <laughs> and uh, you fly from uh, Vancouver to uh, Bella Bella. Okay. Uh, that's a 90 minute flight. And then you take a boat, and we have a photo of a boat later on uh, from Bella Bella to Klemt. Okay. And uh, <laughs> Up, that's, this is the bear. Yeah, this is uh, the objective of the trip uh, to th see this uh, fellow. And we'll see one more picture. And uh, this is in Canada, so you got to see a little bit of the Canadian dollar there. Uh, from Vancouver, you take a ferry, and uh, these ferries are huge. And this is an example of the kind of uh, uh, ships that they are. Now, uh, did they bring on those big trailer trucks? Yeah, yes. oh, they yes. did. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Then you uh, land in uh, Vancouver, Vancouver and, Island. Uh, Vancouver Island, and uh, it's a really a beautiful, beautiful spot. Uh, and it's uh, you have not only this uh, sculpture in flowers, but uh, there's a lovely hotel there, the Empress. Is this where you stayed? No, no, no. We, no we were we we were just day trippers to uh, Victoria. Okay. This is Victoria Island. Island. Victoria right. Island. Okay. Right. Which is different from oh, the, the city the flowers do look beautiful. Yeah. And this is a very famous hotel where oh the Empress you, is where you take tea, which oh, we okay. didn't. But uh, it's, it's very British in that way. Um, and the gardens were beautiful. And uh, needless to say, uh, because it's British, uh, you have to have uh, a pint in a local pub. Okay. And uh, so uh, we indulged. Uh, the as you can see, the street is. Are quite you sure lovely. this isn't a Cuba? This looks like <laughs> the, the Cuba trip with the cars. Well, that's what's interesting. We happened to be there when there was a parade of old cars. Oh, okay. Uh, on uh, their main drag, and uh, as you can see, quite a lot of lush uh, gardens, uh, lush trees. Yeah, that trees. looks like a '53 uh, or '54 Cadillac. Yeah. 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 And one of the ways you get around uh, the harbor uh, is through these little uh, ferries. And uh, I, I think it's lovely that the taxis, uh, that these are, they call them taxis. 
They look and, like city, New York City cabs. Mm. You know, uh, with the same kind of markings. Yellow uh, cab. Yeah, yep. yellow cabs, the checker cabs. And of course, uh, you know, even an outdoor restaurant has lovely f uh, flower uh, gardens and uh, it's just quite, quite, we, we were fortunate with our Do they weather. have pretty good weather year round or it gets pretty cold in the winter? <clears throat> I don't know. We would okay. in the summer. But it rains a lot. So like Seattle. It, yeah. Like Seattle, it's basically yeah. the same weather pattern. So the flowers and the landscaping is gorgeous. It's very green. And like Brits, they love to garden. It's beautiful. And one of the things I like to do is just take pictures of signs. And I, uh, uh, I thought, uh, you know, the, the next two are just funny. Uh, and there's one more. Come on, guys. There it is. Uh, use your inside, inside yes. voice. <laughs> while Anybody who's a grand grandparent knows that one. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, gee, this one uh, doesn't show up too well, but. Uh, uh, basically, I, I could give up chocolate, but I'm not a quitter. That's a good sign. That's right. Since right. I'm in the chocolate business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta have this stuff, and then uh, you know the Canadian uh, fast food, the bear running after the guy. Uh, that's not uh, totally true, but uh, it's all fascinating, funny, and it's now do a lot of people live on this Victoria Island? I don't know. Okay. It, it's, I, I think they're all full-time residents. It's a pretty big place. It it's is also, pretty big. It's also a very popular um, resort. Yeah, all resort. But I think there looked like there were established businesses there, and I think people do live there. And it's a big retirement place. Really? <coughs> people will, it's cheaper to live there. It's less hubbub. And so people, when they retire, will I just read an article, there. believe it or not, it was saying a higher and higher percentage of Americans are living outside of the country for retirement. Right. But I guess Medicare doesn't cover you. That's correct. Oh, he see, he knows from the insurance business. <laughs> correct. Yeah, the Medicare doesn't cover you. Right. So, God so forbid you have healthy. a health issue, you got a problem. Just stay healthy. That's stay all. healthy. There that's you go. All. This is what? <laughs> Uh, this is uh, the Butchard Gardens. Yeah, yeah, on Victoria Island, about uh, a half an hour, an hour north of Victoria itself, uh, is uh, this garden. Oh, and so you drove pretty far on the island. Yeah, uh, not not that far. You took a tour, or yes. a day you tour. did day yeah. tour. Okay. Right. And this was the the primary part of okay. the day. Um. Why don't you tell folks about Oh, it? look at this. Wow. Oh, the it was worth the, the trip. The gardens are extraordinary. Did um, you feel uh, diminished as a gardener yourself? Did you say, I felt I can't. inspired. <laughs> you felt inspired. Very I, good. I also knew nobody was going to buy me a castle, so <laughs> I was off the hook. <laughs> That's a good, I like that. I felt inspired. This, wow, is that beautiful. This was a quarry. And they had a picture of it. It was a played out quarry. Really? It was just stone. In fact, when you, you don't see it in the picture, but when you're there, you look around and you can see the quarry walls going up, I don't know, 15, 20, 40. It was, it was really high. But they, it was just magnificent. They just transformed it into a really special place. Um, lots of fountains. Oh, limestone, OK. And uh, so they, they designed these uh, fountains. And uh, I don't think my photos do justice for the different designs that, the, uh, that these fountains make uh, in this uh, area. But uh, we tried to show uh, the spraying out. And it's uh, just gorgeous. And uh, 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 along the walls, there is all sorts of foliage, and uh, they said that uh, you know the original gardeners had to go up with pulleys on the on the walls in order to plant the flowers. You know, I'm uh, sure you're right, but you know it shows you what you can do with old mind, not mind so much, but open minds, right. quarries, things right, like that. Right. You can make them beautiful. Right. Yeah. Just takes money and soil. I right. was just going to say, <laughs> for money, it's amazing what you can do. And the nice thing that they do with the gardens is, and they're huge, they're acres and acres, is they give you 
uh, like a map with flowers, so you can can see what you're looking at. Really? You know what kind of flower, and then they sell the seeds. Oh, um, they sell you seeds there too. If you want to. Uh, Needless to say, I brought home a lot of seeds. Well, you know, we have a place in Quincy, uh, Quarry Hills. Yes. I don't know if it's a big, beautiful golf course yep. and housing, and that was a quarry. So. Yeah. Yep. And also, you're right here. You have uh, the uh, uh, the garden in the woods. Uh, oh, was that originally a quarry? I didn't know. Uh, no, I don't think it's oh. a quarry, but it's oh. the type of place where you can see uh, floral, all the different flora uh, arrangements. The uh, what's interesting about this is that each of the flowers uh, have a particular region. So there's a Japanese garden, there's an Italian garden, there's uh, a Southwest garden. Uh, there's and a Venetian garden. Come on. Yeah. So, and not only were the flowers specific to that region, but the style of the gardening design, was. The design. And that was really beautiful. Uh, it was just lovely. It was a lovely experience. And uh, they also have some fun. And uh, the next two photos uh, show the uh, fun that uh, that they have there. Uh, oh, with the topiary. Yeah, the topiary yeah, yeah. of, uh, you know, the uh, deer uh, eating down below. Isn't that something? Now you have to, when you're walking by on the paths, you have to be careful because uh, you'll miss these things. Right. So you can spend literally a day. Uh, and this is a big attraction, day. I would be. Oh, yeah. yeah. There yeah. were tons and tons of people. Oh, well, big for us. We like it. Plus, they have food. <laughs> <laughs> and seeds. And seeds. Uh, gift shop. I mean, what more do you need? Uh, for me, just the lunch is worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Walking around builds up an appetite. You know. There's something wonderful about looking at flowers. It just, It just... Makes you makes me happy. These are a type of peonies. And the, now, now this is what they have a little Indian village no, there too. No, no, we uh, just uh, switch gears on you. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, we now have gone back to uh, Victoria. I'm sorry, we went back to Vancouver now. Okay. And uh, on Vancouver, there's uh, uh, there's an area. Uh, what is that area where the park is? Oh, well, that's all right. there's an area with a park. Anyway, yep. uh, it goes out into the sound, and uh, they have, uh, you know, these totem poles. And what we learned from the totem poles is that uh, unlike our American statues that, oh, my goodness, that one is broken, we have to fix it, uh, totem poles in the culture of the bands in uh, British Columbia are representative of uh, events that have happened in that particular family. And when rain or wind or whatever destroys the totem pole, uh, that's okay. They don't go fix it up. Uh, and perhaps another family will build uh, another totem pole. Don't ask me how we put that, that one in there, but we did. Got to have a flower, right? Now, yeah. these are a bunch of totem poles. Yes, yeah, these are totems. Yeah, this is all part of a park that uh, you could go cycling in, walking, and it's right along. Are there a lot of Indian populations in this area? Uh, I don't know. Uh, they call Maida them. says yes. Okay. I think there are a fair number of, of bands. Okay. Um, they, call, they call, the people we call Native Americans, they call First Nations. And there's there was First a, Nation Canadians, or they First don't? Nation Canadians. Okay. Right. Um, and there was a huge museum. Do they have casinos? No. Not no. In the area oh, they we don't were. have the casino deal. Okay. Not, no. Not in the area no, we were. No. But better here in America. They yeah, got a casino. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but there's. I'll take a um, casino over totem poles. <laughs> there All was right. a, a wonderful museum um, for um, First Nation. Um, culture and there are totems, ev not everywhere, but they're, they're, a lot. their um, culture is very present in Vancouver. Oh, um, I think you see now, a lot of it. Now, was this a Chinese garden? This is, is a this dragon. Basket. Yeah, this is a Chinese. This, is the, yeah. this was the Chinese garden. Yeah, and this was, I think, a gift to Bouchard Gardens from the Chinese government. Does the government own this Bouchard garden, or is it no. private? No, oh, it no. is private. private. Oh, private. Yeah. 
uh, although we can't see it, uh, this, this is uh, back in Vancouver. And uh, we see some steam or smoke. Uh, I do see that. Coming out on the left-hand side. And this is, I believe, the only steam-driven clock uh, in really? the world. Yeah. I never heard of such uh, a thing. Every 15 minutes, yeah. the steam really? goes off. Steve yeah. goes off. Yeah, right. Uh, in the middle of a really fun neighborhood in Vancouver. Yeah. And uh, this is looking out at from, uh, from this park. And... Uh, uh, you can see some of the ships that are out there, and you can just imagine during World War II what it must have been like with all the ships lined up before they uh, crossed uh, the Pacific to go to wherever they were going. Uh, this is So you're walking along, and there's an area where the kids can play uh, in, is, let's say, a little water park. And uh, this is fascinating. This is a kid's dryer. Uh, it actually blows air, uh, warm air, I might add, uh, as the kids walk through to dry them off. You know, it seems from your photos that it's a very uh, family-friendly environment anyway. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. I, uh, uh, yeah. I think it's a very, we were only there a few days, but my impression was that it's probably the greenest city I've ever been in, ever. But also, it's I'm just, getting a sense that it's, it's a nice it's, family trip. Yes, and there, there is a, there are lots of places to cycle, to walk, to you, to be a family. Yes. It's, um, I think it's a very livable place. Yeah. No, it um, looks lovely. But beautifully yeah. green. Uh, more, totem uh, more totems. Uh, except this is a picture of my wife as well. No, oh, now is this the white bear? Yeah, oh, we're talking about the white bear. The okay. Yeah, bear. Yeah. So now we're really getting get into bears. So again, uh, this is uh, why we why we uh, are this up is up in Faklemt there. Uh, not Faklemt, uh, Klemptu. 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 Uh And uh, as we said, you know, one of the ways we uh, or one of the the way you get there is by boat. And uh, so here's our boat. You know, it's a just small little boat, uh, just uh, four or five of us. A guide, uh, an assistant guide. Now, was this play? I have to assume you planned the lodge event ahead of time, and oh, the yeah. lodge oh, yes. told you we would take care of all this. Yeah, the lodge. Yeah, the lodge included uh, in the pricing of I got of the lodge is your transportation from Vancouver. So you didn't have to worry about planning the boat no, trips and no, everything no, ahead no, of time. No, okay. No. The lodge no. said, "Come, we'll take care." Did the lodge include meals? Yes. Oh yes. Oh, they did. How was the food? Very. Fine. Uh, this is not uh, for foodies, uh, if that's what you want. Uh, no, this is but not I mean, the place to go. But it was quite, uh, quite adequate. You were happy with the food. Quite adequate. Yeah. A okay. lot of salmon. A lot of sa well. I love, <laughs> I love salmon because they raise salmon there. King crab and salmon. I bet they had a lot no, of no right. No king crab. Uh, no uh, king. They, really? Uh, they make too much money selling it. Ah. Uh, Seattle, you know, has a lot of the restaurants. Right. Yeah, you get a right. lot of king crab. Right. And Which I, I love. Of course, I like everything. So here's the lodge. And oh, notice, it's a modern building. Oh, yeah. Relatively, both wings have uh, uh, bedrooms uh, up and down. And then on the ground floor is the main, main gathering room. And uh, a symbol of the area, uh, the raven and the woods. And uh, we bought a picture that also showing a whale, uh, which is significant in this area. Uh, so the nations, uh, Maida, why don't you tell okay. them about the So nations? this particular band consists of two groups of um, first, first Nation. nations. One is the Kittisu, but the Kittisu was such a small band that they merged with the Jaja or JJ, I'm not sure how they say it. So it's a, a melded band, and you can see the difference in, in people's faces. Um, but um, together they run the lodge. They also uh, have a... They look, what, a little bit like Eskimos? Yeah? No. no? It, uh, maybe. It, maybe it, so, but I, I no. can't say that. Okay. No. Yeah. Um, but they um, they run the lodge. They um, run a logging operation. They run oh, okay. salmon fisheries. They're very, very wed to the land. The land is really... Yeah, but really they sound like they business people. They are. Yeah. They are. Uh, Klemtu is self-supporting uh, in the sense that they have their own power plant. Uh, 
Oh, really? Uh, they uh, have a fish processing area. Govern uh, themselves, the yeah. BAM? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Uh, oh, wow. the, they have their own hatchery. Really? Uh, now, did you get a sense they were living pretty well? Because, you know, we have in America, some of our tribal lands, the people live t uh, terribly. Yes. I mean, I'm not blaming it on the government or anything. I'm just saying there's a lot of poverty and alcoholism and different issues. This group sounds like they're very uh, successful. I, I think that they are figuring out how to be self-sustaining. The community is about uh, 400 people. Yeah. Um, they own their own houses. It's it's a very tight community. They so have, you'd say as an outsider, they look like they're doing well. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, the best way to I to describe this is that they are trying to reinvigorate the culture right. that they originally had because when uh, the uh, Eastern Canadians came to this land. They prohibited the uh, bands from speaking their language. Uh, when uh, they went to school, they were told not to talk in their native language. So they wanted them to become uh, uh, English. Yes, so I yes, gotcha. yes. Uh, and uh, right now, there, there probably was missionaries there too. Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right now, what they're doing is uh, the bands are quote fighting back. And uh, they're going to their own schools. They're going to uh, their the kids are learning their uh, learning stories, which are their cultural stories. Uh, they're learning how to create stories. They're learning how to use uh, names, uh, Indian their their what uh, America names, and they're learning to identify with their names. So. Uh, uh, our boat driver, who we have a picture of later, uh, he said that when he went to school, they knew nothing of what these kids know about today in their culture. Uh, it's uh, a really amazing kind of re-education. Uh, well, I, th I think you see this globally with a lot of small groups that they want to encourage. They feel they're losing their uh, traditional uh, ways. Very they, much so. They had. They they actually they, did. I, I yeah. Mean, I think I think this is a trend you see globally where people are saying, "Hey, we don't want to just be a right. homogenous." Right. Like with the Brexit, the British a lot voted and said, right. "We don't want right. to be just generic Europeans. We are Brits." One of the things that they're doing is they hired the their language was only a, a spoken language. It was never a written language, and so they hired an ethnographer to create a written language yeah. to match their oral language so it can't be lost, so they can I th pass I, it I, down, which I, I think is I compliment them. They're doing a lot to say, hey, we don't want right. to lose, lose our, the language. our traditions, right. yeah, our they're, history. They're reinvesting in their own community. And uh, what they did is built this lodge. Uh, and the lodge is where you have ceremonies. Uh, we were honored to be part of a group to watch uh, the, I'll say, the young children uh, put on a dance and a show for us. Oh, and, really good. Uh, they yeah. also taught us uh, something about their music, uh, something about their art. And this is a, uh, a view of what the village looks like. And uh, the next photo is of the fish processing plant, which is... Uh, they own a processing plant, too? Right. Yes. Oh, for the salmon. And they, right. right. And it's worked completely by the people in the Isn't village. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So oh, they yeah. really... Oh, this is a big place. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, did you ask them this? I mean, I'm only asking you that. I didn't expect you to ask them. Do you ask them if they pool the profits from all the businesses together, like a kibbutz or a communal... You know, village I don't, or I, I don't know, but I'm going to assume uh, that some of it is yes, because it's a communal, right. uh, like the lodge itself is owned by the community. It's not owned by chief so and so. Yeah, chief so and so. So uh, how the profits are actually divided, I don't know. Uh, do the profits, uh, you know, hire the doctor that's there? 
or run the clinic. Uh, oh, they had a clinic too. They have a clinic there. Really? Uh, they have a school. They have a school. Did you get a uh, sense the Canadian government was involved too, or did it seem this was their own initiative? No, no, no. Uh, the Canadian government is there. Uh, I don't know to what degree. Okay. But uh, high school is not at this community. The kids. Do uh, leave, yeah. Do leave and go to a boarding school for high school. Oh, really? They have to be stay yeah. over. Well, they only have four hundred people so living there. Enough people to present right. a proper. Right. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah. You find this, you know, not just the schools. Um, you find in small islands and stuff, even with health care. Yes. They may have a clinic, but if you've got something to, right. serious, they send you to. You know, uh, right. if you're in the Caribbean, they'll send you like Arthur Anderson in Texas if you yep. have cancer. Or, right. Yeah. So they must do the same right. kind of thing with right. school. You're right. right. 400 people wouldn't it's create enough, enough right. of an interesting high school right. to keep them And it keeps modern. them in the insula. Again, they're not out in the world. They're not... So, you know, again, this is, the, this is what sitting in the sun? Uh, well, <laughs> not no. quite. Not quite. It's sitting, yes. But uh, uh, one of the one of the things we wanted to do, of course, was going out to see the bears. But, uh, you know, uh, the reason we enjoy these kinds of trips is that not only are you venturing out to see, uh, in this case, the white bears, but also the black bear and the brown bear. But you're also learning something about the culture and the people, and we'll get. Oh to yeah, a, no, that's what's interesting. Yeah, we'll get to a, an important <coughs> part. So the last two pictures, uh, my wife and I, going out to this particular place where we were seeing the black bears, and the reason the black bear was on this particular stream is uh, you can see this vaguely uh, gray area. I wish I had a pointer right now. Looks and like a salmon. That's it exactly is. what it is. Oh, okay. He's going to have salmon dinner? Yeah, that's right. He's oh, going to okay. have salmon dinner. <clears throat> so our boat takes us out to uh, the uh, this area. You can see it docked here. And then from the oh, boat, look we at that. transfer. What a great picture. <laughs> uh, what a great fisherman. What do you mean, picture? <laughs> and uh, that's why the bears are there. Uh, oh, look at the water behind. I don't know if our yeah. guests yes. can see. These are like out of a movie. Yes. Yeah. They, yeah. They, oh, George, I'm going to applaud you. These are terrific. <laughs> <laughs> the salmon really do leap. Yeah, they, they leap. Five, ten feet. I mean, it's incredible to watch. And the bears catch them. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, some bears. Yeah. Some bears. Well, we'll show you this one here. Now, this bear over here is a young young bear, and he was standing in the water trying to catch. And Not having only... too much luck? No, we all began to feel really sorry yeah. for him. <laughs> and uh, there was one uh, one episode where the fish uh, were jumping, and then it would hit the bear. And he would look around like... saying, hey, we, you know, yes. where was that? Maybe he wasn't the smartest <laughs> bear. Well. <laughs> oh, there he got something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he did okay. And uh, there he is standing in the, this rushing stream. We were there for about six hours uh, watching uh, not only this bear, but in a couple of minutes you'll see. How many fish do they eat there? Oh, they eat, oh, they eat pretty they, good? They, they, they <clears throat> eat, well, what's really interesting is that some bears like the heads, some like the bodies, oh, but really? don't like the heads. Some will eat the skin and not the skin. Picky eaters. <laughs> oh, <really? And>, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just like, uh, you know, a four-year-old. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing to watch them strip a salmon, though. I'm just, oh, they do? They Oh, they hold it down with one foot, and then they just... Oh, they got a whole system. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they go back for more. <laughs> now, do they eat anything else? Do they eat uh, leaves and things? They are opportunistic. They will fish for salmon here. There's so much salmon that yep. they never have to eat they, anything else. I don't, I don't know... Uh, uh, our associate producer is showing you some of the little clips that we have of the bears eating. And uh, uh, you can see that. Look how green the moss is. Uh, oh, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, oh, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was very, very pleased with some of those photos. 
And uh, he knew we were there. He kept looking. The BM uh, knew. He didn't care. Oh, yeah. Care. Oh, they can smell you a mile away. And, and they, they don't care. There's so much food there that as long as you don't mess so with them, So this is a very good you. place to be living as a bear. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Yeah, this is well, good. of course, this you can get sick of salmon. You can get <laughs> sick of salmon. Now, uh, this is an older bear. Uh, I, I think this is the one that's uh, older. He came, uh, came into this area. Uh, where the younger bear was, and uh, he, this guy was much bigger. The other bear was maybe about uh, three, four hundred pounds. This is close to eight hundred pounds. Oh, really? That much bigger? Uh, and uh, okay. the other one was maybe about four years old, uh, maybe away from its mother for two years. So you know that it survived. Uh, and this you know, guy pushed him around. Uh, no, we're very interesting. <laughs> they know when. Hey, it's time to get out of here. And uh, you, so you'll see in a photo or two, uh, the, there he is. There he's running away. Uh, oh, he left the spot. He, okay. Yeah, I had enough of this. Yep. Uh, I'm getting out of here before I get eaten up over here. So uh, we, we see. Now, this uh, is what? That's a grizzly. Well, this is a grizzly. And uh, oh, again, that, okay. uh, I did a poor job of editing. And uh, so let's not even talk about this guy. All right. That's all right. Okay. I just asked. No, that's okay. You can ask. Uh, I'm the one who's re responsible. Now, we're going on from here to what the area looked like. Uh, Bill, next photo, please. Got to help them. Oh, look at that. So this is what uh, the, in, you know, it's kind of like an inland passageway, and uh, it, it is just breathtaking. Yes. Uh, the... Uh, you know, you got the water, you got the sky, you have the snow on top of the mountain, you have... This is what, when you were talking about Antarctica, to me, this is what the Beagle Passageway yes. looks like. Yep. Very similar yep. to this look. What's right. amazing is... And the same thing with the big high mountains in Chile. Right. It's right. gorgeous. But yeah. what's amazing about this is from the time we got to Bella Bella and could have kept going for at least 90 minutes but beyond... This is all you see. It goes on and yeah. on and now, on. Now, were there any glaciers along this? No, no. Not, okay. not in this area. No, we're... Because if you go to Antarctica, you right. will see some glaciers no, down. Okay. No, glaciers. Uh, moving along, one of the things in this inland Oh, the passageway, whales. Yeah. Look at them. And, I see them. And here we'll see... Here we're seeing two whales. It, very often, whales will <laughs> uh, work together to gather their fish. And uh, it's very difficult to actually see uh, the, sh the whales working together, they'll actually blow bubbles up. And uh, the bubbles will uh, cause the fish to uh, go in a smaller and smaller circle until finally they breach, open their mouths up, and as they open their mouths up, scoop this, uh, the, fish. the fish. So here you see two of them who are working together. Uh, and that's the mouth in front. We'll get a couple of other photos of uh, some Oh, you whales. must have been thrilled with these photos you got. No, oh, I was thrilled in just seeing mm -hmm. it, never mind the photos, but having the photos to be able to what share with you. What was the temperature outside, would you say? It's really quite, you know, maybe 40, 50 was, degrees. So a little bit cold, cold even yeah, though it's summer, but cold. Not, not cold, not cold. but, no. No. but cold. not hot either. No, 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 no never. No. Oh, yeah. you didn't have any hot days? No, 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 no. no. Well, you went in the summer. Now the kids are swimming. They were swimming. The kids are swimming. Really? Yeah. I don't swim in 50. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a warm weather swimmer. Oh, we got another video. Yeah. So uh, here we see the bubble that we were talking about uh, and uh, uh, creating this bubble to capture the fish. Uh, Look how clear these pictures are. Yeah. Wow. And as you can see, the whale is just meandering around. Now there's another one someplace around here. It's a jiggling photographer working overtime. Uh, they're wow. making this big circle. And then they'll Look come There in. he is. There he is. Oh, my God. Hey, oh my there's God. that sound. That's what now we get. Now I got it on that video. That looks like the ad. There's an insurance company out west, maybe Pacific. Yeah, Pacific, yeah. Yeah, yeah who does those. Pacific the, Life, yeah. yeah. It's so thrilling to see. It doesn't matter how many times you see it. It's just thrilling. Yeah. Oh, the, they're, they're the just wildlife is, is always wonderful yeah. to see. 
And oh my God, look at the mountain with the trees. Yeah, well, what, it, what impressed me in this particular photo, and including it, is that you got a little color in the spray that was coming up from the whale. And you can see the whale uh, right below the, sp where the spray. Well, and that shows uh, you why they have a lumber industry out exactly. there. Exactly, right. Yeah. right. Uh, and there's a lot of controversy about clear-cut uh, clear lumber, lumber uh, and that technique out there. And since the uh, bands own the land, they prohibit it in certain areas. And uh, there's a whole thing about hunting. The land itself is not uh, owned by the tr by the uh, tribes by the by the tribes by the by the first uh, by the nations, so that they are allowed people are allowed to hunt. So who owns the land that they're on? This is very interesting because yeah. unlike in America, the native people never ceded the land formally. To Canada. Okay, I'm they, with you. They never signed treaties okay. giving it over. So recently, one of the bands in the in the Northwest sued the Canadian government. It took them 27 years, but they now have clear title to so that land. What you're telling me is, for the moment, the government says we own the land. For the moment, the government says that, but this this particular band won right outside of Vancouver. And now there are there are enough other um, tribes, tribes picking up that lead Litigation. because because there there was a precedent set. So I think the particular tribe we were living with hired a lawyer, and we're beginning the process of. Um, but, in the, but in the meantime, in those woods that we saw, uh, they have volunteers who uh, I think they call them watchmen. Watchmen, yeah. Who are up in the area, uh, and when, let's say, hunters come along, uh, they tell the hunters that, you know, this is uh, our territory. Uh, we'd really appreciate it if you didn't uh, hunt in this area uh, because some of these animals are quite sacred to us. Oh, okay. And uh, they don't have any authority, per se, uh, but uh, other than that of persuasion. And uh, so it's, it's quite intriguing. Uh, we're now seeing uh, this photo, unfortunately, I didn't take. Uh, the one I took uh, didn't come out quite as beautifully as this one. But uh, one of the things when you go on uh, these mm. kinds of uh, expeditions or travel, adventure travels, uh, you, you meet people and you share things and techniques and uh, equipment and lo and behold, uh, this fellow, uh, John, uh, showed me this photo and I said, oh, I gotta have it because mine didn't come out nearly <laughs> as well. So what we have here is, uh, I believe the uh, sow, uh, the mother uh, bear. brown bear, is off on the left-hand side. In the middle are two of her cubs. Cubs. Big cubs, though. Yeah, the <laughs> one in the middle might actually be two cubs. Oh, okay. And then the third is over on the right. She had three cubs, which is quite unusual uh, in and of itself. So. Oh, why? What do they usually have? Just one? Uh, two, maybe. One or two? Okay. Uh, they usually don't survive. Oh. Uh, so this happens to be. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, the bears don't have a good. Uh... Well, no. You know, it's uh, quite rough to uh, have the right uh, food supply in order to give birth and then protect the sow, uh, your uh, cubs, from males who don't want other males, uh, even young males. Oh, to so be you there. were told by the Indians that they're not so quick to, uh, a bear is a little bit special. Yeah, they're they very special. Yeah. Very special. Yeah. Oh, they're not so relatively right. easy to... Right, uh, the numbers are declining. That's they another, are. Yeah. So here you have two uh, two of the cubs right uh, in the area where well, we were. Well, you know what? If they're running a hatchery, they'll learn how to in vitro the <laughs> bear. <band. laughs> they could. Well, today you can do everything. Uh, I'm sure it's being done someplace. And uh, so what we have here... We the, saw him before, didn't we? That's right. That's yeah. Mama Grizzly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is the no. cub. Yeah, oh, this that's the cub. cub. But you can begin to see the hump on, on the back. Uh, 
And oh, they get a hump, the grizzlies? Okay. Yeah, because grizzlies are actually uh, ground feeders, so they, they develop their muscles. There's the oh. mama. Uh, develop their muscles digging up the roots. Oh, I see. So well, that's the hump that you're seeing. Oh, so they're right more there. vegetarian. Yeah. Yeah, very they, much so. they were apple. We were sitting on a log and they came up the riverbank. Behind us were a stand of apple trees, and apparently they love apples. So they're real vegetarians. And they'll eat, again, they're opportunistic. If there's a fish lying in there, they'll eat it. They'll eat it. <laughs> But um, they're mostly diggers. They'll go, yeah, uh, they'll go after it. And um, so here we have a cub again out in that plain that we talked about. And uh, uh, you saw from the other photo uh, when we saw three or four of them out on the plain, uh, they were maybe about 100 feet away from us, uh, maybe 150. Did you it, meet other couples who came on this? Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. So what kind of people? Were they Americans? Were they Canadians? What did you find, if you remember? On this particular yes. trip, they were primarily Americans uh, from all over the, the states. Uh, were they there the same they, interest as you to see the white bear? or what? Did no. You, uh, well, well there, was, there were some people who were just interested in seeing the wildlife, okay. per se, and they knew that the... Uh, uh, White Bear was up in this area. Okay. Uh, there was a couple from England uh, who oh, were out there. Oh, they came all the way. That's a hike. Uh, well, they weren't only going to okay. uh, to this area, just to see it in general. Uh, so there's a variety. There are a variety of people who are just interested in wildlife and interested in this type of uh, uh, adventure travel. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's what I would call this it adventure, is adventure travel. travel. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is, uh, you got to exercise yourself just a little bit. This is a little bit. bit almost like a safari trip where it you is. go to Africa, you know, and stay in a lodge and see the animals and everything. And this is it's a same, northern version. It's yeah. the same idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, much more civilized than at least what we did in Africa, but uh, far more, uh, you know, you're not riding around in jeeps as you would in Africa, but rather you ride yeah, up in I a mean, boat. Yeah, but I mean, it's a nice, I, I like these, this is a nice kind of vacation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and great. it's um, it's, a, it's a long day. You're up very early. It's, it's physically very satisfying. Yeah. Uh, uh, what we're seeing here, uh, the uh, two, uh, two of the three cubs were playing in the stream right near us. And what's interesting here is, uh, you know, are you ever afraid, uh, you know, the, the, how close will the bears be? And here they're about 25 feet away from us. Uh, the fellow who's, who was guiding us said that uh, the uh, summer before, uh, he had a group of people. We were about uh, maybe six or seven tourists and two guides. Uh, we're behind a log. We're not camouflaged or anything, but we're behind a log. And uh, the sow, the mother uh, bear, uh, brought two of her very young cubs right up to where the log was. Right near maybe the about people. 10 feet, Maybe about 10 feet away from where the log was. Popped them there. Kind of like told them, now stay here. And she went out and uh, fed herself out in the stream. Then came back, and uh, that is so unusual for the behavior because usually she won't leave any of them anywhere. And uh, so uh, uh, they're a little acclimated to the fact that there were humans there, but uh, they're not interested in us. Uh, and here they go scampering up uh, the stream. Uh, and uh, this bear was actually on a spit uh, in the stream, this black bear. Uh, the others that we were watching were... Now, I see the birds very close to the bear. Yeah. Did you see some interesting birds while you were there? Uh, we... I, I know that there were eagles in the area, and... Uh, uh, but that's about it. Okay, uh, yeah, so it wasn't birdie. pointed out to you no. too much with this bird or that no, bird. Okay. No. no. Uh, one of the guys was interested in that. Uh, here's, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, this is actually the living quarters for uh, the fishery uh, people and some of the loggers. 
and we had an opportunity to uh, go on that barge, if you will, and see the living quarters where the guys and gals live. Uh, did you see the, the hatchery? Did you visit? We did. You did. Yeah, saw the hatchery. We did. And uh, in a couple of more photos, in fact, uh, we'll see. Uh, again, you know, some of the... I'm going to ask area. Bill to speed up a little bit so we can see. Okay, here we are. What we're seeing here is the uh, uh, hatchery. Well, it's not really a hatchery. It's a, a pen where the salmon are growing. Okay. And uh, this is a whale next to the pen, and we're going to see some photos uh, of blood on that whale. And the reason for it is that the whale got caught up in one of the lines. Oh. And, uh, there are men who tend those uh, pens, live on that barge that we just saw. And uh, you just barely in this photo see... Uh, no, I see the red. Yeah, the red, but you also see a little line right on the red. Uh, and that's what was actually caught. Uh, we'll so the whale got too close to the head. The well, whale got entangled yes. in the in the And in did the they line. get out there and get rid of it? Well, that's part of the story. Uh, one of the reasons, you know, we said how involved were the Canadian government with the whales and with the uh, people. One of the things that uh, the One Nation would like to do is have a whale entangler trained up further closer to where they are. And uh, they were notified of this whale being entangled and called down to Vancouver. Remember what I said, Vancouver is uh, 90 minutes north by plane and then 90 minutes north uh, to get to Klemtu. This is north of Klemtu. Right, so, so you're talking about uh, you, you, a definite uh, four or five hours. Exactly, by the time you right. round the guy up, you get the airplane, because oh. they, they didn't fly so in the a whale special... could die. Exactly, oh. exactly. So they want to train someone up north, and the Canadian government, for whatever reason, at this moment in time, is a little reluctant. So we see this whale uh, captured, and we're going to uh, see a few more of the entanglement, you know, here's this uh, just floating up and down. Did there they say go. this happens more than they'd like? Oh, it does. It's, very, if it's not infrequent. Not infrequent. It does happen. In fact, it just happened off Cape Cod. It yeah, went, we had one right here. Right here recently. But not an entanglement. Yes. yes. An entanglement. But we don't do any um, growing um, uh, no, but it got fish entangled. pens out in Cape but Cod. But they get in lobster pots, gotcha. whatever's out there, they can get yeah, entangled in. they get entangled. And... Uh, yeah, it was just reported in the Globe uh, about the unentangling. Uh, and uh, so on the right-hand side is our captain. And uh, I, I can't say that he looks like Eskimos. You asked that question yeah. before. Uh, our no, guide, he doesn't. No. Our guide on the left is... He uh, looks like a college kid. Yeah, well, it's, uh, he's actually a graduate student from England. Oh, really? Okay. And he's been coming to this area for six years, and he won't be able to come anymore because of how the visas the work. The visas work, land. okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that's his work permit. They yep. give you a seven-year right. turnover, probably. Yep, the, something yep. exactly like that. And uh, You can come back, though, after the you leave a year, then you can come, come back. back. And uh, oh, he got cut pretty good. Oh, yeah. Well, what happened was he was really thrashing, and in the process of thrashing, w at one point when we saw him, he had wrapped the rope around his mouth, oh, so he God. couldn't even open it up to. So, to what did feed. they end up doing? Well, uh, the good news is that uh, we were very intrigued as to what happened ultimately, and uh, the fellow who runs the lodge emailed us and told us that. The fellow who was coming up from Vancouver came, free, came, came. and did free the whale. Oh, wonderful. So, well, uh, it sounds to me like they should train somebody up there. Yeah, yeah, someone closer, be a little right. less uh, right. traumatic. You know, who would ever 
think of these things, you know? Well, certainly not me, I'll tell you, you that. Know, I'm, you know, you hand your business card, you know, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm whale a, entanglement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm going to tell people that. You know, what do you do? I'm, I'm whale entanglement. Yeah. <laughs> what was really touching was seeing how concerned and it was heart-wrenching to watch this whale struggle yes i, mean, it, I was and it, heart-wrenching it was, watching this on your video but the 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 way they feel about not not only the first nations but all the people who live the way they feel about the land and the animals is very special it's very important well, to them and they're very protective let me tell you as something. they should be we have to be good stewards because otherwise you know, it's not going to be there Otherwise, it's exactly, it's not going to be there. No, it's very much so. so. And uh, th I, so I think that, you know, here we went to uh, Klemtu in order to see the uh, white bear, the spirit bear. And, uh, you know, we really got in touch with a beautiful garden. Uh, really oh, felt this was something. A lovely trip you took. Really felt something for the One Nation culture and what they were going through. Uh, the feeling for the whales mm. uh, and what they were going through in terms of trying to save the whale. And uh, the whales, as we said before, play a very important part in their culture. And then on top of that, seeing the brown bears, uh, the black bears, seeing the cubs, seeing the fishing, uh, seeing the fish that they were fishing. Uh, no, it was great. great trip. It was great. Right. Your photography was great. When are you going off to France? You said you were planning a trip May. to France. Later this month. Later uh, this month. I'm sorry. Late, late, later this, yeah, in, in May. May. And you're going to see these caves with the prehistoric scratching. That's right. Well, what do they call them? Paintings? Yeah. Cave yeah. paintings, yeah. yeah. Cave paintings. Prehistoric. Uh, that should be very interesting. Maybe you'll come back and show us some of those photos. Oh, we Maybe. would love to. I'll yeah. have to have Bill chase you down and... <laughs> get those but uh yeah that'll be wonderful i'm going to wish you both a very happy healthy new thank year you. Oh, and thank, you. thank you thank you so much for thank coming you. i really thought this was great um you know this is a trip that not for everybody no that's but for sure for certainly for people who are very interested in wildlife nature exactly. i have a, a friend he was visiting me today he was just in colorado and i guess he said they went um Frozen waterfall climbing. Oh, my yes. goodness. The waterfalls freeze. They put on spikes and ropes and climb oh, the wow. thing. And I said, Danny, that's not for you, really. He says, well, you're right, Jack. He said, last year, I guess, one of the, the ice broke off. Oh, and God. you're 100 feet up. He says, the guy died. Oh, I my said, God. I says... <laughs> I says, please. It's a little too much adventure. <laughs> a little too much. <laughs> anyway, thank you again, and thank I you. hope we'll have you visit thank you on Travels much. with Jack again. We'd love to. Thank yeah, you. This thank was you. great. Thank you.